Hey my glam girls, welcome back to my channel. It's Chelsea where we talk about all things glam and all things girly. So today I am going to be talking about the new Fenty Beauty Soft Lit Naturally Luminous Longwear Foundation. I'm so excited about this one because you guys, the Pro Filter Foundation I fell in love with right away and then I over the years have developed some thoughts about it. So I was really looking forward to this when I first heard about it. I cannot wait to share with you a full day wear test. I'm actually gonna be demoing two shades for you guys because the first time I bought it, I picked up the wrong shade. Now I have a better shade. So I'll be showing you applications of both of those shades. But before we get into all of that, I just wanna say thank you so much for spending some time with me today. I truly do appreciate it. If you are new and you just even think you might want to stick around, please hit that subscribe button. I have a goal of trying to reach 20K by the end of April. We only have two days left in April and I am like literally within 50 subscribers of hitting my goal. So please, if you think you might want to just help a girl out, hit that subscribe button. I'd love to have you. And if you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much for deciding to come back and support my channel. I appreciate every way that you show up and support me. If it's liking my video, watching it, commenting on my video, shopping through my links, I really do appreciate each and every one of you. And I'm so glad to have you here with me on this journey. So let's get right into this video. Okay, so we have the new New Fenty Beauty Soft Lip Foundation, and here's the thing. I love the Pro Filter Foundation, but as my skin became less oily, it became too dry, so I would have to add a little oil to it. And even with that, I just felt like it sat a little heavy on the skin. Although the finish is literally flawless, it just felt very heavy. So it became one of those foundations that I reached for less and less over the years because I picked that up the day it launched in 2017. I almost remember the date because it was around my birthday. It was in September. It might have been a couple of days before my birthday in 2017. I was all over it, okay? I tried the hydrating foundation formula. It was okay, but it was not my favorite. I have decluttered both of those foundations since then. So now we have the new soft lit foundation. Okay, some things that I noticed about this one that I remember is different from the original Pro Filter foundation. Even though the packaging looks the same, she is giving us, I'm saying she is Rihanna, they're giving us more of a hexagon shape here with the bottle, but that's basically the biggest difference. It's still that frosted container. Um, and if you were to just hold the two up side by side, you may not notice it. I didn't notice it until I actually looked at the cap and then I was like, oh, this is a hexagon shape. I felt like the other one was more like, I don't think it had this shape, but if I am wrong, correct me. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comment section. Okay, getting into some details of it. I picked up initially the shade 330 and according to the shade binder on Sephora, whatever your shade is in the Pro Filter Foundation, you should be able to get that same shade in the Soft Lit Foundation. So I always went with 350 and 350 was definitely too warm. As you can see here in the demonstration, even though I could make it work with like concealer and things like that. It was just too warm. So one of you guys, thank you so much, helped me to realize that my shade was either 310 or 315 and I went with 310. 310 is a warm golden, but it's not as warm. Um, and I did try 315 in store and that was too neutral. I think 315 is like warm neutral and that was just a bit too neutral for my complexion. So we have here shade 310. It does come in 50 shades and it does retail for $35, $40. And we are getting 1.08 ounces of product or 32 milliliters of product. Getting into the details, this is a hydrating and glowy foundation that's waterproof and reduces shine for a notch above natural finish. And this is going to give us a medium coverage and it's gonna be a long wearing medium coverage foundation that gives golden hour glow in a bottle. It hydrates, brightens, and improves the look of skin tone immediately and over time while resisting sweat, humidity, and transfer. So when I put this on my skin, I immediately was like, there's the glow that we people who enjoy a glow from our foundations have been looking for. I felt like with the first like glowy formula that they had in like the squeezy tube, it was just too dewy too oily 
And if you had really dry skin, it might have been one of those formulas that you liked. But if you had like normal to combination to oily, it definitely was like, okay, this is a bit too much. I also felt like that felt a little heavy on the skin. This is incredibly lightweight, like feels like nothing on the skin, blends effortlessly into the skin. And it for sure gives that like golden hour lit from within. I've been doing my skincare, drinking my water, being my best healthy self and my skin is showing it. I really enjoy the finish just like right off the back. And I also really enjoy the look of it, whether setting it with powder or wearing it without powder. So I'm gonna show you a couple of clips from the two days that I wore both shades. So here you're seeing shade 330 in natural lighting. And as you can see, my skin looks beautiful in this foundation just very hydrated but it doesn't look dewy in terms of like dewy to oily it just looks really luminous i definitely feel like this is not solely natural like it says it's a natural luminous finish and i would agree with that because natural finish i would say doesn't look as like luminous right off the bat but this is giving us some luminosity so when i took this in natural lighting it just looked stunning under flash photography, we see no flashback, which I wasn't expecting it to have flashback because the original formula or the Pro Filter formula did not have flashback. So I would have assumed that this one did not. And this one is not supposed to oxidize. And I would, I would have to agree, it did not oxidize on me either day that I wore it with either shade. So I'm really happy about that because if you know the Pro Filter Foundation, that one oxidized for sure, making it a little bit harder for you to find the best shade for you. Now, the first day that I wore this foundation, I wore shade 330 all day. I didn't set it with powder. The only thing that I put on it, which you all don't see it until the end of the day, is I just added the Fenty Beauty We're Even Hydrating Longwear Concealer. I have the shade 310W. And I had that foundation on for about eight to eight and a half hours. As you can see, this held up beautifully. And I feel like the luminosity that we saw at the end of the day was almost just about the same luminosity that we saw when we first put the foundation on, which confirms a few things for me. Number one, this thing is long wearing. Number two, depending on your skin type, you may not have to set this with powder if you have drier skin. This could be one of those foundations that you could just put on, maybe add a setting spray on top and then be out the door because it truly lasted without anything. Like I said, I just added a little bit of concealer to try to like even out the warmth of the shade 330 and we were done. Um, I also feel like I also liked that the coverage remained as well. Now granted, I didn't have anything else on top like bronzer or blush, but I could tell that the foundation was still very much on my face at the end of the day. And that's with like moving around, eating and all of that. This foundation definitely lasted very well. And I was like, okay. Now at the end of the day, I definitely was more luminous for my normal skin. So I felt like if I had to continue wearing the foundation, I would have for sure wanted to put powder on and things like that. But I feel like, like I said, if you have drier skin, you may not need to set with powder. Or if you do want to go in with some powder, you may not need to set with a ton of powder because it's going to give your skin that luminosity that you might be looking for. Today with wearing shade 310, I definitely added more makeup on top and we have had this foundation on now for about six hours. I went in again with the same concealer, which I really do enjoy this concealer, and set it with some powder. We added bronzer and blush, but I have on no highlight or anything like that. So all I put on prior to putting on the foundation was just my skincare. I didn't even go in with my traditional primers because I wanted to see how does this hold up under a little bit of powder? And what do we look like at the end of the day? Now, granted, it hasn't been eight hours. I like to have my foundations on for at least eight hours, but because we saw how it looked like with the other shade after eight hours, I feel like we can kind of get a gist of what this is gonna look like in another hour and a half based on how we're looking like now. So I'm gonna come in close so we can see what things are looking like. So as you can see, after six and a half hours of wear, 
things are still looking really good and the foundation is holding up really well. The only place where I feel like you can see maybe a difference in the foundation is like right along here because my lipstick got on my chin because I was eating. That always happens, so that is what it is. But everywhere else, the foundation is looking really good and we see definitely a little bit more luminosity right around my nose, which is where I do produce a little, a, a little bit of oils typically, but the rest of my face looks just beautifully luminous, not greasy, not oily. I don't even feel like I need to blot. Like if I were to needing to go out, you know, for something a little bit more formal, I would definitely blot just to give myself a more refined look in the center of my face. And I tend to like for the center of my face to look a little bit more mattified than the rest of my face. But like looking at my side profile here and even on my forehead, it just, my skin looks beautiful. It looks radiant. It looks so nice. And I just feel like Fenty really did it with this foundation. I was watching a clip on, I think it was Trend Mood, and Rihanna was like, this is the biggest launch the brand has ever seen since its founding in 2017. I feel like this is the foundation that they did really right in terms of making it look beautiful on the skin, not feel heavy, but it's still long wearing. And it may not work for everybody, but this is how I feel like you can get use out of it depending on your skin type. Okay, so if you have dry skin, I think you're gonna go in with this however you like to apply foundation, and I think this will work really nicely for your skin. Now, considering just from what I saw, this particular formula doesn't have any like like, you know, skincare ingredients. I'm just like scanning over the ingredients. And yeah, there's no like prominent skincare ingredients in the formula. So if you have really dry skin, go in with your hydrating primers, do your skincare like you need to do it. And then I think when you go in with this, with this foundation, you're really gonna enjoy how this looks on the skin. If you have about normal skin like me, then for me, when I wear this again, because how I like to have my T-zone, Danessa Marks Water Powder Serum is my absolute favorite primer to go in with. I put this in my T-zone because I like my T-zone to be a little bit more mattified than the rest of the face. And plus I also like how it diminishes my pores. So I'll go in with this and then I will go in with the Soft Lip Foundation and I'll be good to go once I set everything as well. Cause I am gonna go in and set it with a little bit of powder not a lot, but a little bit of powder, and I will be good to go for the rest of the day. If you have combination skin where you're maybe a little more oily in the T-zone, but you're kind of okay on the perimeter of your face, I would do the same thing. Go in with your mattifying primers where you're oily, and then I think you could very much enjoy this foundation because it's gonna make the skin look beautiful, and you will hopefully be mattified where you like to be mattified. So apply your mattifying primers and then apply your powder in those areas as well. I think you will enjoy this foundation. And then if you are oily, you got two options here. <laughs> Cause I'm trying to think of everything, you know? The first option I would say is if you wanna try this found foundation and you're oily, I would maybe mix this with the Pro Filter Foundation. So if you already have the Pro Filter Foundation and you like it, but you kinda wanna see how does this make the Pro Filter Foundation. Maybe mix a drop or two into the Pro Filter Foundation and apply that all over the face. See how you like it. I know some people who have oily skin who are like, I like a nice little radius. I just don't want to look oily everywhere. So that might be one option for you. Second option could be go on with your mattifying primers just like people with combo skin would and maybe see how you like this all over the face. It might work for you, it may not work for you, depending on how you like your skin to look once it's all powdered and set. Um, third option, don't do it at all. So if you're like, look, I don't like luminosity, I don't like radiance, I like a very mattified look, then this will not be the foundation for you and that's fine. I would suggest the Pro Filter Foundation because that one's gonna give you mattified skin and I think, you know, it will give you the look that you're looking for. So I hope that you found this video helpful. If you've tried this foundation, let us know down in the comment section below, shade, how it wore for you, your skin type, because I always love for us to be able to learn from each other. I learn from you guys. 
I have one perspective that I feel I'm pretty knowledgeable on, but you, the audience, can give us more perspective from usage and all the things. So definitely comment down below your thoughts. Let me know what you think about it. And if you made it to this point in the video and you have yet to subscribe to my channel, I would love for you to consider subscribing and joining the Glam Girl Squad because we'd love to have you. And guys, that is it. Thank you so much for watching and I really hope to see you in my very next video. Bye guys.